Having missing values in our data sets is quite common. We rarely get the data which is perfect. While we know how to deal with missing values when it comes to numerical features, and there are a number of approaches, starting from the univariate approaches like mean, median, to multivariate approaches where we even use algorithms. But when it comes to categorical features, and you ask this question to anybody, what is the best approach to impute the missing values? Most often the answer is that we replace it with the most common value or the mode. But is that the only approach that we may want to try? Especially if you're solving a problem where the imputation is quite critical. We will deliberate on this topic in this video. But before I proceed any further, just a suggestion. In case you've not referred to our detailed playlist on data preparation, you might want to do so because it'll give you a different level of insight. So I'll leave a link in the description that you might want to explore at some stage. But as of now, let's get started with the treatment of missing values, particularly talking about categorical variables. And this tutorial would have decent amount of learning for you. Let's get started. So we are at the Google Collaboratory and I'm going to use the make classification class to generate the data set which will have the missing values as we intend to have just for the categorical variables in addition calling the basic libraries like pandas and numpy. Now this make classification is a class where we can mention how many observations we want, how many features we want, and how many of these features we want to be informative which means they should help us predict an outcome. Do we want redundant features, the features which will not be very useful? How many classes we want? So then we are mentioning the target column should have two levels, something like a zero one and a random state because we are just randomly generating this data. Then we are converting this to a data frame. So what will be generating here would be separated in terms of X and Y. We want to put it like a data frame together. And we are saying, while we'll have the features, we would want the names of the features to be populated in the order, like the first feature would be title, numeric feature one, two, and so on and so forth. We are doing four, four such features. On top of this, we are adding two categorical features. And before that, we've just set a random seed to ensure that whatever we do is repeatable and reproducible, particularly for categorical features. But we are doing it here to ensure that we add two new categorical features to our data. First is categorical feature one, which has three levels, A, B, and C. And the second is categorical feature two, which has three levels again, X, Y, and Z. We can have any number of levels. And we have a target column because we are doing a classification problem. So we've mentioned that the target column is same as Y, whatever we've generated here. So let's take it from there. And then we are introducing about eight to 10 person missing data. Let's say we choose to introduce about nine person missing data. So what we are saying, take a copy of the data frame that we've generated above and make about nine person values as NANs. So this is basically choosing the indices from the original data frames copy. And it's converting about 9% of the values in categorical feature one as NANs. This is just the data generation piece. If you want to write a copy of this data, we can always do that, but I can comment it because I've already written it, right? So now our data is ready. Let's start exploring this. Let me just run these two lines first and let's start exploring it further. Let me show you the first few observations of the data. And you can see we have numerical features and we have two categorical features and we have a target column, which is zero and one. Let's look at the missing values in the data. So we'll do is null dot sum on this data frame and we get to know that about 90 values in categorical feature one are missing. 90 is nothing but 9% of 1000, which was the overall data size. Now on purpose, we've created a relatively higher proportion of missing values so that we may not want to choose to simply drop the rows. If a minuscule amount of rows compared to the overall data contain missing values, then we may simply choose to drop those rows. But in our case, we want to look at some treatments, right? Starting with the common treatment to advanced treatments. And that's why we chose a relatively higher proportion. That's what we have written here. We can't simply choose to drop the rows containing missing values as it would lead to loss of approximately 9% of the overall data. So you don't want to do that. Let's first talk about the common approach, which is replacing the missing values with the mode of the column. So this is a univariate approach because while doing this, we'll only be focusing on categorical feature one. So we can simply do a value count so we have three categories in this feature, A, B, and C, and which is the most common category, category B. So the common approaches, which 99% of the times people know, is this approach, that you take the mode of the categorical feature, 
whichever category has the highest frequency, you put that as the imputation. So to do this is very simple. We can simply say that we found that mode was B, so we can do a fill NA of B. Fill NA is a predefined data frame method, which fills the missing values with the specified entry. And we are saying, let's put B here. So now if we do this, this DF1 imputed should not have any missing value for categorical feature one. Like I said, this is the common approach. So this is approach one. Let's move on to the second approach, which is replacing the missing values based on the similarity profile. Now, what is this? Let's understand this a little better. First, we start with a copy of the original data frame. We're calling it DF2. And this time, we are replacing the missing values in the data frame with a label called unknown. So it will be seen as a separate category, which is unknown. And will be needed for profiling. You'll see that in some time. Now we are doing the value counts. I guess we already know what the value counts would look like. So these earlier values that we had are the same. And you see another category, which is so far not assigned to any of these A, B, or C. We have 90 values here. Now, while doing this profiling, we will need the entire data to be numerical. And as you know, in our data, we chose to create another categorical variable, which does not have missing values. That's categorical feature two. So we'll first have to do its encoding. How do we do encoding? We can do get dummies and we can call the categorical feature two, drop the first level and just check the observation, check the head of the data. So you would see the same categorical feature which had categories X, Y, and Z is converted into two categories Y and Z. Just in case you're not clear about any of these topics, you may refer to appropriate sections and you'll get clarity on those concepts as well. So this converts your categorical feature two into a true and false. Now you might be wondering, True and false, how is that a number? Well, the good thing about Booleans or true and false is that for any calculation, they are implicitly converted into one and zero respectively. True becomes a one and false becomes a zero. So it's as good as one and zero. Now we are putting this in our data frame. So we are saying, let's add these two columns in our data frame, which we are getting from get dummy. So this was more to show you what is this outcome like, but we are putting the same outcome, creating two new columns in the data frame, which are known as Y and Z. So this is what we have done. And since we have introduced an encoded representation for categorical feature two, we want to drop the original representation, which was a single column. So we are doing that now. Now what we are doing is we are grouping by the categorical feature one, grouping by the feature which had missing values. And we are taking the mean of all the other numerical values. So what are we doing? Look at this. So now for each group, which involves A, B, C, and the unknown category as well, we have aggregated all the numerical features. We are particularly looking at the mean of all these features. If, if you have extreme value, you may choose to go with the median instead. But in this case, we just chose to go with the mean because we just want to demonstrate a case. So now we have a numerical representation corresponding to each feature. At this stage, if we will choose to assign a proper label to unknown, which will be one of these A, B, or C, we will not blindly be looking at this column alone. See, the problem with the mode approach was that we were looking at just one column, which was categorical feature one, and we were finding the most common occurrence there. But now, based on the similarity that the unknown has with A or B or C, whichever it's closest to, we will put that label here. How is this superior? You're not looking at just one feature for which you have to do imputation. You're looking at all the features and then coming to a conclusion. So this is a multi-weighted approach and a superior approach. Let's transpose this outcome so that you see these as the columns and these as the rows. And we can do that by simply doing a dot T. So we're just calling it data. And this is how it looks like. So we have ABC as the column and unknown as a separate column. Now what we are doing is you can do it in many ways, but we are trying to look at the similarity between each of the pre-assigned labels, ABC and unknown one at a time. So we will do it through a loop. You can do it one at a time because we don't have too many categories to compare with. We are just simply saying that these are our columns and we're going over each column in our data. What is data? This above outcome. And then we are saying that we want to compute the Euclidean distance between the unknown vector, which is this column, and then pairing it with A, pairing it with B, pairing it with C. And we want to compute that distance and capture it in the form of a dictionary. So let me run this. You can see these are the distances. Now we are not looking for higher the better. We are looking for a closer the better kind of a distance. So you see among these choices of A, B, and C, 
the unknown vector is closest to category C. Now we will choose to impute the missing values with category C. And you can see the result has changed. Earlier when we did through the mode and the univariate approach, we chose to impute with B. You have a larger visibility now because you looked at an entire table containing all of the features and then you're doing the imputation. So this is a superior technique. How do we do that? We can show you the original data, which had 90 missing values for categorical feature one. And now we are saying that wherever we have missing values, let's fill it with C. So now if you look at the imputed copy of data frame two, you will see categorical feature one has no missing data, right? So this is a better technique is what I would say. Now the next technique that follows is a supervised learning approach. It is quite possible that some of you have never studied supervised learning or that's yet to be introduced. So in case it's something that you don't understand, uh, you may skip this piece, but if you understand supervised learning, then you'll be able to appreciate the approach that we're going to show you next. Because we're going to be using a predictive model to impute the missing values here.